As a child, I was one that always received the poor report from the teachers. Won't focus on the task at hand. Get sidetracked too easily. His imagination runs away from him. Were the teachers right? I will let you decide. Over the next 15 minutes, I'm going to take you through an incredible journey with football over 18 months. Think outside the penalty box. Move the goalposts. Raise the crossbar. What I'm saying is there's an objective to aim for, but do not be afraid to digress. The idea, early in 2013, what I wanted to do was provide a higher level of competition and exposure for Isle of Man based senior football players. The objective. Why was I doing this? The reason was, as I saw it, I'm a lover of Manx football, supported it for over 40 years. And I'd noticed over 10 to 15 years that the actual level of competition that our senior players were being offered was diminishing. We weren't getting off the island particularly. We weren't able to play against professional and semi-professional footballers. We'd lost the steam packet tournament. So I decided to see if we could actually do that. I'd noticed, I was jealous I suppose, of cycling. We had Mark Cavendish, Peter Kenyig. Look where we are with cycling. We had rugby going away every week but football wasn't doing that. I was involved with a local club, St John's United, and we first of all tried to improve our ground facilities as such so that we could enter the FA Vars. We spent nearly 150,000 in trying to achieve that, only to find that the English FA removed dispensation and we weren't allowed to go into that competition. Yes, we, we were beaten at that stage. My objective, I had to think of something else. We then decided at St John's United that we would uh, offer ourselves to go into the Ireland Games to represent the Ireland Man Games team, as the Ireland Man Football Association weren't putting a team into Bermuda. Many w will have heard of it as Bermuda Gate. Um, this went on for quite a while. Uh, it was quite a public debate on it. But at the end of it, the Ireland Games Association decided that St John's could not represent the Isle of Man at the Ireland Games. <coughs> However, from that, I was noticed by the NF board, Nouveau Federation board, or as many called it, the non-FIFA board. And they wanted to host an international football tournament somewhere. I jumped at it, I was being told this would include semi-professional, professional footballers. What I wanted, I was going to be able to put some of our players up against a higher level of competition. Then I was told the name of the countries that were going to be participating. Tamil Elam, Ossetania, Sealand, a fortress off the Suffolk coast, Alderney, Raisha, hence the Timwells Hill International Football Tournament, held between the 4th and the 8th of July. This was the catalyst for where we are today. What happened at this tournament? Two gentlemen arrived a gentleman from Sweden and a gentleman from Germany. They were passionate about this type of football, football outside the normal box, where it was more than just football, it was using football to promote your identity. They say, said that the NF board was in disarray and now was the time to set up a new world governing body. Well, I was all for that. So on the 8th of July, we had a meeting at the Sefton and Kanifa was formed. Kanifa formed in the Isle of Man. On the 3rd of January of this year, we held the first AGM in Germany. Now, please don't forget what was my objective. My objective was providing a higher standard of football. Look where I now am. I'm now talking about forming a, a world governing body of football. Um, we're talking to teams from Tamil Elam, Raisha. Look exactly where we've ended up. Well, this was all well and good. I had to try and get my objective back on track. We had Kanifa, so I decided, well, St. John's can't really join into this. You know, they're not international. You know, we can't have the St. John ethnic people or the St. John's county or, or whatever. I would have to do it as the Isle of Man. So I set up the Manx Independent Football Association. This was me, my wife, and my father-in-law. Um, so that's what exactly we set up, the Manx Independent Football Association. We had to have a team. So we formed a team. Well, we had a team in our head anyway, and we're going to call it Ellen Vannon, Manx for Isle of Man. Now the fun began. 
we had to get permission. This was what is termed non-affiliated football. In other words, it's not governed by FIFA and it's outside the box. We obviously received a lot of, how could you term it, um, unsatisfactory comments about it, we'll put it mildly like that. Um, I then started from November of 2013 to January of 2014. Every night sat in my dressing gown, sat on my couch in my kitchen with three computers, dealing with the legal department of FIFA, the legal department of UEFA, the English FA, the Alaman FA, and the football ombudsman. This, I think, was quite uh, funny to my wife, who actually took a picture of me doing all this, and she sort of said that FIFA must think they're dealing with this massive organisation, and you know, um, but it was me in a dressing gown. <laughs> anyway, when we got to, uh, to March, we'd actually um, got a memorandum of understanding signed with the Alaman Football Association, which we'd worked towards. So now we're not going to get uh, any sanctions against players or officials, and now what we could also do was, we could go into the Kanifa World Football Cup in Sweden. But what I didn't have at that time was a team. I didn't have a manager. We had Mifa, and it was a little pretty picture and a Viking longboat in it. So what we decided then, we'd form a Manx team. The first time in international football on the Isle of Man, it was going to be a Manx team. In other words, to play for it, you either had to be born here or grandparent rights. And it wouldn't just include players from here, it would include players possibly from the US, players from the UK, but also what I thought at that time, here we go, off on another tangent, is it was an opportunity to promote the Isle of Man on the world stage. I didn't realise how big this was going to go. Now remember, we're only talking now, what, about five months since it all started. So what we did is we picked a squad of players. I got a manager in place, one of the best managers on the island at that time in, in club football. He bought into the idea and suddenly we had a group of players. And all of a sudden I said to them, you're now going to be Manx. You thought you were English, or you thought you were Irish, you're now Manx. So we taught them the national anthem. We then got them to do quizzes, and we taught, taught them all about the heritage and culture of the Isle of Man. Before they were allowed to go to Sweden and step on the plane, they had to get 90% of that all right, or else they weren't allowed to go. So we had yeses with us then. The next thing, obviously, is as most ideas do, we tend to find that um, they fail because of finance. It's a horrible thing in the world that we're in, and I'm sure there's, there's many ideas that have actually floundered because of the lack of money. Um, the world would probably be a different place if many of the ideas had actually come to fruition. So what I decided is we had to get international recognition for MIFA. We had, it was more than getting sponsored by, and I shouldn't name things, but Port Jack Chippy for 300 pounds on the shirt. We had to get large money. What we were talking about doing was travelling the globe. So what we did, we have four organisations up there. We got involved with them organisations. Now, I'm not going to go through each one of them. Um, time doesn't permit. But what I will say to you is that through our contact with them organisations, it wasn't just a case of uh, promoting MIFA. It also put me in touch with some absolutely fantastic people. People that bought into what we were doing and they're still on board today. What I will mention is Darfur United. Darfur is an international football team that's been established in the refugee camps on the Chad border. I'd heard about them. I'd heard that they'd set up an international football team in refugee camps. I heard about their people, the genocide, the atrocities that they'd faced. And I got in touch with the charity in California. Once again, digress, gone off in a different direction. You know, better standard of football, I'm now talking to refugees on the Chad border. Um, but I got in touch with the charity in California and said, look, I want to get involved here. I want to help you get to the World Cup in Sweden. How can we do it? Well, obviously the, question, the answer came back, raise us some money. That's exactly what we set up to do. But with our contacts with Darfur, that put our profile right up there. We were being talked about by CNN, New York Times. And suddenly Ellen Van and Amifa was out there out there internationally in a position that it could attract international sponsors. The Horace historic day, the first match ever for Ellen Bannon, a proper Manx national football team. It was played at the Bowl on the 6th of April, and as you probably noticed there, the United Nations International Day of Sport. That's why we did it, again, giving us the profile. Obviously, the result, 
Many will say, oh, you must have played poor opposition. Maybe they were. Don't bother me. We played another country and we beat them 10-0. But what I saw on that day was a passion, a Manx passion, a pride from them lads that were demonstrating that they knew they had an identity. I also saw it from the Manx public and we got a lot of favourable comments. And even better still, we raised over £4,000 to get Darfur to the World Football Cup. Here we go in June, the Kanifa World Football Cup. Ellen Van Vannon goes as 250 to 1 outsiders. Alongside Darfur United, the refugees, that's where they rated us. Um, I went and watched the first game of Darfur and they got beat 19-0. We were playing teams that had professional and semi-professional football, some of the players from the top leagues in Europe. I feared for Ellen Vannon. My whole idea could have gone off track here. If the, players, if the team had got well and truly beaten, my objective would have probably been lost. So we play our first match, Nagorno-Karabakh, and again, probably another area that nobody knows where it is, but it's the Caucasian mountains associated with Armenia. Again, all players professional playing in the Armenian leagues. Ten minutes gone, and we're 2-0 down. Oh dear, I think it's time to get back on that plane and get back to Ronald's way. Anyway, I won't bore you with the football, but we ended up winning that game 3-2. And as many of you will know, we ended up in the final at 250 to one outsiders, losing to County Denise on a penalty shootout. That World Cup and the way the players were, the identity, the pride, the passion, everybody was attracted to Ellen Bannon. We also had exceptional media coverage from guys that we brought over with us, which also put us out there. 300 million people heard about Ellen Bannon, 69 countries of the world. We were featured in the New York Times. I did an interview on BBC World, 168 million saw that. We were in Al Jazeera. I mean, it, it was just phenomenal what people thought of the Ellen Bannon and the Alaman. My idea to improve better standard football for players, here we are, 300 million, 69 countries, New York Times, BBC World, it's crazy. But that is what I'm saying, as I said at the start. Are we right to just say we focus in one direction? We must be allowed to go off in other routes. You never know where it's going to actually lead you. What's next? Well, because of the way we were in Sweden, what our lads did for us and the general thing that surrounded Ellen Bannon, we are now holding the European Championships of Kanifa in the Isle of Man next June, where the whole eyes of Europe will be on us. Countries like Ossetania with 15 million people. Ossetania, by the way, is a large area of France. Again, probably not many of you know that. But this is the type of competition we're going into. The Romani people are competing. The first ever time they put an international football team together, covering a population of 30 to 40 million people. We on the Isle of Man, 80,000, and we're in the same level as these teams. So all in 18 months, providing a higher standard of football. Have I achieved that? Well, I can say that from Sweden, uh, one of our players got a three-year contract um, in America with the Rochester Lancers in the indoor football soccer. So yes, we're starting to achieve it. We're starting to get our players noticed. People are watching them on TV when they played in Sweden, and, that, and that's good. We've still got a way to go. But look where we are now. We're an international football team. We're promoting the culture and heritage of the Isle of Man across the globe. So think outside the penalty box, move the goalposts, raise the crossbar. Don't be afraid to digress from your original objective. You never know where it will lead you. Thank you for listening to me this evening. Three legs across the globe.